Hi, I'd like to tell you about a very unusual product that is on the market now, and it has to do with a tennis racket with two handles. And the first obvious question is, why do you have two handles? Well, I think almost everybody will agree that it's healthier to exercise both sides of the body evenly. The way tennis is played now today with a single-handed racket is most people use the dominant right side here, standing on the right foot, and then when they play a backhand, either one-handed or two-handed, they're standing on the same right foot using the same dominant arm. So that they're really exercising one side of the body more than the other. With a racket like this, you can play either a forehand off both sides like this, or you can play two hands off both sides, or you can play a backhand slice off both sides. So the idea is that it, it gives you an opportunity to exercise both sides of your body evenly. So almost everybody, well not almost everybody, everybody agrees that you wouldn't go to the gym and exercise one side of your body more than the other. So it makes sense to exercise both sides evenly, and if you have uh, two handles, then that can be done. Now, if you tried to do the same thing with one handle, if you hit the ball like this, you'd have to throw the racket and juggle and get the grip to the other side. So that makes it kind of complicated. If you already have the grip, then the idea is it's very easy to switch from one side to the other. You just simply let go of the grip, the handle that you're not using, and hit it this way, it comes back to neutral, and you hit the other one, okay? so. That's one, that's one aspect of it. The other aspect that everybody agrees with is that in terms of lateral reach, if, if you look at how much reach I have on this side and how much reach I have on that side without taking any steps as opposed to a long reach on this side and a short reach on this side. So obviously that has much less reach without taking any steps than that does. So you have an advantage in reach. The other, the other advantage you have is an advantage in power. So if you're behind the racket, driving it forward, the muscles that drive the racket forward like this are stronger than the muscles that drive it forward like that. So you have an advantage in power. Now if you doubt that, what you should do is get down and try to do a push-up, push-ups with the back of your hands and see what happens as opposed to your hands going this way. So you have more power in this direction than you have in that direction. So in terms of health, reach, and power, there are some advantages to this racket. There are also advantages in the serve because the angle of the, of the racket in relation to where you want to hit the ball is already preset. So instead of your arm having to go up and making this motion with your hand, that's already built in. So there is an advantage on the serve as well. And there's an advantage in any time you're trying to cut the ball when the racket head goes around the outside of the ball like that with your hand over to the side it goes around the ball more easily than if your hand were in line with the racket face like, like this. Anyone who has taught tennis for a while or anybody who has observed tennis for a while will notice that if you get someone out here who's never played tennis before and you put a racket in their hand and you just toss a ball to them, uh, 99,000 out of 100,000 players will move around this way and hit the ball with the forehand, uh, the forehand stroke. The, the forehand stroke is the more natural stroke. So the idea is that what happens when the ball comes to the other side? There are many top players today who, who favor the, the forehand stroke to such an extent that even if the ball comes on this side, they will take three or four steps around here to hit it with a forehand rather than hit it with a backhand. That's very common in play today. So the idea is that if, if a forehand is the more natural stroke, why can't you have a forehand on the other side? Now, most people will make the observation that it doesn't feel natural, it feels less, less skilled, it feels clumsier, it feels weaker on that side. But what they don't realize is that all the shots on that side feel weaker, whatever choice you make. So if you again take the beginner and you say, let's see you hit a backhand, that will feel weak and awkward compared to their forehand. Okay? And if you have them hit with two hands, that will sometimes feel weak and awkward also. So the idea is you're not making a choice between something that feels good or something that feels awkward. All the ways feel awkward. That feels awkward, this feels awkward, and using the non-preferred hand, that feels awkward also. So it comes down to which awkwardness will you choose, okay? Do you want to choose the awkwardness that, has, that is healthier for the body, that has more reach, and that has more potential power? Or do you want to choose the awkwardness that, has, that is less healthy for the body, that is less strong, and that has less reach? That's what it really comes down to. So this is what I suggest to people, is that you look at the whole thing and you choose whichever awkwardness 
you feel has the most benefit. And of course, I think that the one that is healthier, has more reach, and has more power is the one that you should choose. Either one, no matter which one you choose, you're going to have to overcome the fact that that side of the body and that stroke is not going to feel as good as the other side. So the question is, which one do you want to devote your energy to overcoming the awkwardness of? The one that is healthier, that has more reach and has more power, or the one that is less healthy, has less reach and less power? It's up to you. So there are other subtle advantages, but rather than talk about it anymore, let's just uh, watch uh, an up-and-coming player, a 14-year-old guy here who has been playing for about three and a half years, and you'll see him doing all the shots I just talked about, and you can make up your own mind as to whether or not you think that's the way uh, tennis will be played in the future. We're going to start out hitting two hands on both sides. Okay, two hands on the right. Whoops. And two hands on the left. So almost all kids that we start out with, they all hit, start by hitting two hands on both sides. And they get used to driving the racket forward with the, with the arm in the back. So in other words, even though I have two hands on here, I'm driving the racket mostly with my right hand here. And then on the other side, I'm dri driving it mostly with my left hand. Mostly left hand. And after you get the feeling of being able to use either back arm to drive the racket, when the ball goes wide, you say to yourself, OK, now I can drive it with one hand on either side. I can drive one hand there. That's a one hand right. And there's a one hand left. So when the ball goes wide, there's an advantage to hitting with one hand. When the ball's in close, there's an advantage in hitting with two. So if you have both options, you have the best of both worlds. And when the ball drops short, you can dig it out with one hand. Slice. Yeah, that's it. So you have all the soft shots. So there's, there's a, whoops. Here's a soft drop shot. Left-handed slice. Okay. And a soft drop shot right. So in other words, you have every shot on both sides of the body, no matter what kind of a shot you're looking for, whether it's powerful or soft. Again here, left hand slice, right hand slice. You can even slice the ball with two hands, which we call a Santoro. So here's a shot where you do a slice with both hands. Go. Now the advantage of being able to do that is that you prepare you prepare a certain way for the shot with with the racket in two hands over to the side, and then you have the option. So there's a slice with two hands. Here's a, a forehand with two hands. Here's two hands, a topspin. So with the same racket preparation, you have the choice of all those different kinds of shots. And of course, at the net, it's the same thing. We volley with two hands in close. And if the ball goes wide, you simply let go and hit with one hand. And when you have two hands on the racket, you can move that racket so quickly I'm going to do what we call, um, give them a, just a simple volley, first of all. Okay, and then we're going to do what we call machine gun volley. Watch this now. This is four, four volleys in a row, one right after the other. All right, we'll see that again. These are the kind of volleys that you have to do in doubles, where you have the ball coming back very quickly at you. There's one, two... Three, four. Now how about an overhead? Okay, if you happen to get an overhead, there's an overhead right and an overhead left. Again, overhead left. That's it. So if you have an overhead, somebody lobs the ball over your head, usually they're gonna, you're going to try to lob it over on the side where he's facing the sun. Well, if you can do it left or right, you're never facing the sun. See, he ran around it to hit left there. That's it. Now he can run around it to hit right. So you never have to face the sun 
on an overhead or on a serve for that matter. So come on over here and we'll take a look at this serve, all right? All right. This is a little bit of a warm up, but that's pretty good. It's a very good action. That's the left handed serve, all right? Let's see one more. Very good. Now, how about a right handed serve? Serve on the other side. Oh, nice kick. Oh, very nice kick. Now, it so happens today that the sun is up on this side, so if a person were a left-handed server, you'd have to be serving uh, facing the sun. Now, if you can serve on either side, so for instance, just show them what you, how you would be facing if you had to serve left. You see, you'd be looking right up into the sun. So then whenever that occurs, he just serves on the other side. So serve right, no problem. Serving on the right-hand side, no problem with the sun. And then the same thing happens on overheads, of course. All right, one more time. Let's see you kick it a bit. Beautiful. That's it. So how would you like to have the advantage of not, not ever having to serve while you're facing the sun? So if you can serve left and right, and the sun's over on this side, then you just serve on the other side. And the same thing with overheads. So that's a great advantage. So obviously, if you can do what Brett does, you can serve away from the sun on both sides of the court. You'll never have to face the sun on either side of the court. The other thing that is the advantage to serving left and right, of course, is that the ball tends to curve out of, out of court on both sides. When you serve right-handed, it tends to kick this way. You serve left-handed, it tends to kick that way. So you have the advantage in not, ever, not only not having to face the sun on either side of the court, but that you can curve the ball drastically out of court on both sides if you can do that. That's a great advantage for that. Now we're going to put it all together, seeing all the shots that you would see in any, in any normal, normal rally. Or, see that's a wide one where he got it left. Okay, now I'm going to bring him wide over on the other side. He gets it right. That was a forehand left, now it's a forehand right. Oh, good shot. Ah, oh, good dig. Very good. Ah, uh, very nice. 